Rivet Crew, it's Thursday and we are doing some gymnastics today. We are doing three five minute AMRAPs with a one minute break in between each one, right? So we get a little bit of a break in between, not too much, just enough to kind of catch your breath a little bit before moving on to the next AMRAP. As you can see, the format for each AMRAP is very similar, the only difference being the pull up variation. So first, uh, first AMRAP, first five minute AMRAP, we have five strict pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. Um, second one, we have five kipping pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. And the third and final AMRAP, we are going to do as many rounds of breath as possible, five minutes of, five chest-to-bar pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. The push-ups and air squats always stay the same, pull-ups change as we go through. Score-wise, you're going to pick up, you're going to start each AMRAP wherever you finished on the last one, right? So if the timer goes off and you just finished, let's say, push-up number eight, you'll start with push-up number nine when the next AMRAP starts, right? That'll make our scoring much simpler. So it's all about gymnastics today. Um, ideally, we're choosing a variation that we can, uh, we're shooting for about five rounds per AMRAP, so about a minute per round. So we want to keep things moving. So choosing rep numbers and variations that kind of lends itself to us getting that kind of score. For those of us who struggle with pull-ups, of course, we will choose, uh, we'll go banded pull-ups, maybe some jumping pull-ups, various various variations. That's good English. There are variations we can use. Um, some of our Fit30 athletes might want to use ring rows. Any of all these uh, is solely acceptable. Um, push-ups, probably going to break those up early from the start. As you probably know, push-ups get challenging after a bit, so I have a breakup plan going in. And feel free to be flexible, right? Have a plan, but then feel free to change it as the workout goes. You might think, well, I'm going to turn all the sets of two, 10 push-ups into a five and a five. And after a while, it might become, you know, four, three and a three or whatever, something like that. So, you know, be flexible there. I'd say the air squats is probably the, uh, the least challenging of our stations. Um, and if you are really comfortable with the push-ups and the pull-ups, go ahead and bang out those air squats pretty quickly so you can get back to the upper body stuff. If you struggle a little bit with the uh, pull-ups and the push-ups, I would say slow those air squats down a little bit, giving that upper body a break, right? So the idea with these movements is that we kind of going through a variety of movements in that we know we have upper body pull, right? And then we're giving that a break with some upper body push, and then we go into some lower body push with the air squats. So we're kind of cycling through movements that should give the various body parts a break as we move through them. I don't know if I said that very well. Hopefully you get the idea. So gymnastics today, uh, I mean, gymnastics are all about movement quality, right? You really get the most out of these exercises if you focus on doing them well. If you're just ripping through a bunch of really sloppy looking reps, I mean, you know, you get a workout in, but you really don't get the full benefit of these movements. And I know oftentimes people think air squats, they think push-ups are like, yeah, those are just easy things. I'm not worried about those, but you get so much out of these if you do them well, if you do them properly. Um, let me talk about moving stuff for you. So I'll start, uh, I'll go in reverse order. We'll start with those air squats. So what is an RX air squat? So I've seen this, I've seen this a few times recently. I'm a little concerned that we're kind of moving in the direction of our air squats and aid squats not really being um, RX in that they uh, do not get to go through the full range of motion. So range of motion is a huge part of an RX score, right? It's not just the weights. It's not just whether you're getting the chin over the bar, it's whether you're going through the required range of motion in a movement. So let's talk about that. Air squats. So air squats, at the top of our squat, the knees and hips should be fully extended. You should be standing straight up tall, just like this. This is the top of the air squat. At the bottom of the air squat, the crease of the hips should be clearly below the top of the knee. You see where my top of my knee is? You see where my crease of the hip is? It is below. And then I go all the way back up to standing, right? See, this is good. Good, good, you get the idea. You see what I'm doing there? I am squatting nice and low. That's about as low as I comfortably can squat without getting any kind of weird round and back position. You should work on doing the same. Examples of no reps here. So at the top, right? We may be squatting down below parallel, great, but then only coming up to about here and going back down. So this would be a no rep, no rep again because hips and knees are not opening at the top. You may be opening up your hips and knees to the top like this, but then only squatting to about there, right? You can see my hips are above my knees. This is well above parallel. So these would all be no rep, no rep. You get the idea. So all the way up to the top, 
Pull up parallel five, all the way up to the top, do it right. Um, push ups, again, I know I'm always talking about this. So at the top, we should have fully extended arms and a nice straight line through the hips and knees, right? This is our top position. At the bottom, and through the middle for that matter, the only thing touching should be the chest. Not the hips, not the knees, not your crotch, nothing else. We should go all the way down, just touch the chest, and all the way back up again. The knees should stay fully straight. The hips should be fully open, right? Just like that top position of a squat, same idea. One thing that's helpful here is to squeeze your quads really tight, right? It supports the midline, locks those knees open, and push your toes down into the floor. And again, straight arms at the top, at the bottom, the chest is the only thing that touches the floor, and it should touch the floor. If it doesn't, it's not our X. And back up again. Touch and go. All right, our X standards right there. And of course, with our pull-ups, we're looking for fully extended arms at the bottom, and then chin over the bar at the top. And as far as quality gymnastics is concerned, when we do our chin over the bar pull-ups, our head should be in a neutral position. We should not be reaching for the bar with our chin, right? That shortens our range of motion. It looks sloppy and you're really, you know, you're not getting as much out of it. A good quality gymnastics pull-up, we keep the head neutral, we get that chin clearly over the bar with the head in a neutral position. So don't, don't do one of those uh, turkey neck or chicken neck things where you're reaching for the bar. With our strict pull-ups, we want to make sure those feet stay in front of the bar, right? We want to kind of find our nice gymnastics hollow, right? We don't want to be broken. We don't want to have the legs hanging behind us or the hips or anything like that. We actually want to get for a nice tight hollow position. The feet stay in front of the bar the entire time. With our uh, kip, kipping and uh, chest of ours, we actually get hollow behind the bar. We lead with the feet, right? The feet come up in the front. Then we pop the hips, then we pull to the bar. And again, chin over bar with head in a neutral position or chest to bar if you're working on those today. All right, that's enough. Focus on quality today, guys. We're doing gymnastics. Do them well, do them right. You get so much more out of it uh, when you're doing these. And hey, you just look sexy, you're doing it. Right, trust me, I know. Talk to you tomorrow.